I have a problem. I can't play games normally now. I'm addicted to texture packs. Most people will be satisfied playing their emulator with a higher screen ratio and resolution, but I can't. You can see the pixels, bro. You know what I'm saying? It used to be fine, but now everything is in HD, bro. I can't take those low-res textures. My wife caught me in the closet with a FGRO GX HD texture pack. The game doesn't even look that bad. It doesn't need a texture pack. Humor aside, emulation helps a lot in the preservation of games, and you can't deny the investment of fans into the medium. That's why I want to highlight a couple of projects made by such fans. Texture packs really help breed new life into games. Knowing the inconsistent quality of certain remasters and remakes, this is a nice alternative to have. It's also an endeavor that takes a long time to make, so the effort is appreciated. A good one to open this list is the Rayman 3 HD Texture Pack. It's simple but effective. Take the textures from the 6th gen versions, released in 2012, and port them on Dolphin. Okay, it might be more difficult than that, but compared to what else is on the list, it might pale slightly. The game didn't need it that much outside of the heavily pixelated interface, but it does extend its lifespan. The nicest thing about all this is that the buttons are ported too, so if you're playing with an Xbox or a PlayStation pad, you can have a more consistent experience by having your actual buttons. Unlike most Dolphin mods, you won't have a download link on the Dolphin forums. You'll have to go on the Rayman forum. The other is ICUP321. As with the rest, the links will be in the description. The next one on the list, and definitely a heavy hitter, is the Ipatia Wind Waker retexture. Wind Waker is a game that has stood the test of time, but my crackhead mind can't help but notice the slightly blurry textures. The pack offers different sizes in terms of texture, the biggest one taking about 30 gigs of RAM. The final results, no matter what you take, are staggering. Akin to the first one, you have some choices when it comes to textures. You have a variety of interface and button cosmetics. On top of that, you also have different textures for the environment, like different grids for the look of the waves on the sea. There's also a nice variety of costumes and retextures for some of the characters and the equipment. The final subject of this video gets to be the highlight mostly because it comes from a content producer I watch. It's about on par with the previous Zelda pack, but I'm more familiar with the behind the scenes in this case. Nero's Majora's Mask Texture Pack is an excellent work. Also, as mentioned before, he quite well documented his work on the pack. The amount of work it takes to make a single texture, let alone a single room, is jarring. You can understand why a lot of texture projects are just abandoned. The dedication that he has and the attention to detail to not disrupt the style of the original game is admirable. On top of all this, he has an in-depth tutorial on how to install the pack and how to troubleshoot issues. These issues additionally give you an insight into the way the game was made. There's issues in the game you would have never suspected. The real benefit, however, is to overcome the shortcomings of the 3DS version. That version was appreciated, but it came with a number of flaws, especially gameplay-wise. With this pack, it's also encouraged to install mods so we can counteract those issues. You then get the best of Majora's new textures, but also gameplay improvements. You only miss out on the few improvements the remake made. All of these efforts really give a good word on the behalf of PC gaming and emulation. I do not advocate for it, but we've literally reached the point where the original products are hard to find, and when made available, they're of lower quality. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Games are some of the worst preserved medium on the planet. Even the worst movies have at least a DVD or Blu-ray release. While in gaming, some of the best games have not seen a re-release for upwards of 10 to 20 years. I wonder if the negative feedback on remasters in the early 2010 had anything to do with it. People confuse to this day remaster and remake. A remaster is important. 
I like my consoles, but the hardware is failing, and if we're talking about cassettes, the batteries are dying, and I don't necessarily have the tools to replace it, and I might not want to lose my saves. The fans have reached a point where they actually know how to program, draw, and model. The games can be preserved in their original state, but also in enhanced versions that don't detract from the original. You can choose how to experience your media. You're not punished because you didn't exist yet or missed out at the time. I almost forgot. How could I sing how I referred to it in the past? The REHD project, an AI upscale version of the GameCube ports of Resident Evil 2 and 3. At the time of this video, one is also in the works, but it has yet to be finished. The term AI upscaled might ring a bell. It's the method used for GTA Definitive Edition. The difference is that the method works far better on games with pre-rendered backgrounds. Also, unlike the GTA Remaster where you had a staff that had little to no time to work on the project, manual readjustments were made where the AI could not fix certain issues. In the end, it's quite an adequate version of the classics. Even the cutscenes were remastered and some of the interface was changed. It's hard to go back now that such a version exists and, again, it's a good alternative to the very average remake of 3. It may not be the ideal, but a well shined and polished version of the original will hold me until we get a proper remake. If we ever get any. <laughs>